Hello, I want to welcome you to this study in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is my prayer that this video series will be one of the most encouraging and strengthening studies you will ever explore. Before we dive in, I want to take a few minutes to explain the methodology that we will use so that you will be confident in where we are heading. In this series, we will study the scriptures differently than you may have in the past. Often people study sections of the Bible in isolation. For example, they might study the book of Romans, or they might study a topic such as the end times by examining sections of prophetic books such as Daniel, Ezekiel, and Revelation. However, as you will soon see, the scriptures are incredibly interconnected. For example, much of the book of Romans is actually a commentary on the first five books of the Bible, Genesis through Deuteronomy, or what is also known as the Torah. Thus, to fully understand what Paul is saying in Romans, we must also study those books which are the foundations of what he is writing. Likewise, it is a little known fact that God's entire prophetic timeline is foretold in the Law of Moses as we will see in chapters 10, 11, and 12. The goal of this series will be to study the New Testament as believers in the first century would have understood it. But how would that have been? To get started, let's take a look at a familiar passage in the book of Acts to see how the early believers determined if something was true. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. When Paul and Silas arrived at Berea, they, being Jews, went to the synagogue to share the gospel with other Jews. The scriptures say that the Bereans received Paul's message with great eagerness, but it also says that they examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. It is easy to miss a very important point here. What scriptures did they use to determine if what Paul was teaching was true? The New Testament had not been written by this time, and, even if it had been, it would not have been available at a synagogue in Berea. The only scriptures at that time was the Old Testament. This means that everything Paul taught had to agree with what is written in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the foundation of the New Testament. Therefore, when we study a passage in the New Testament, we will look for its foundations in the Old Testament. At first, this will seem very strange for those who have assumed that the New Testament is completely different and separate from the Old Testament. However, once we work through a few examples, you will see how deeply interconnected they are. This is a real eye-opener for those who have been taught, as I was, that the Old Testament is obsolete and therefore can be ignored. A good example of this approach to studying the Scripture occurred only a few hours after the resurrection. Jesus, apparently in disguise, came alongside two of his disciples who were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Even though they had been with Jesus, listened to his teachings, and had even seen his crucifixion, they simply didn't understand what had happened and consequently, they were in deep despair from what they saw as being his failure. Let's listen in on their conversation as found in Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. And he said to them, 
O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. When Jesus departed from them, they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Jesus explained his entire ministry, death, and resurrection by showing them things that they had never seen in the Old Testament. That would be important for us because most of us are not very familiar with the Old Testament. However, these Jewish men had studied the Old Testament all their lives. When he opened the scriptures to them, he didn't simply unroll a scroll and read it. He literally opened the scriptures so that they could understand what they truly meant. Just as we cannot understand the New Testament without understanding the Old Testament, the reverse is also true. The New Testament is like the last chapter in a mystery novel. All the clues were right in front of you all the time, but you had no idea what they all meant until the very end. In Romans 16.25, Paul calls this a mystery kept secret for long ages. Many churches today teach that the scriptures contain good moral teachings, but you cannot take them literally. Some say that the scriptures contain many errors, and yet others say that most of the scriptures are simply no longer relevant to us in our enlightened and modern world. This is nothing new. People have always twisted and abused the scriptures. Consider Peter's words. And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him, as he does in all his letters, when he speaks in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do the other scriptures. Paul taught that the entire Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, is entirely true and relevant to our daily lives. This is the position that we will take throughout this study. Consider his words to Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Notice also that Paul said Timothy had known from his infancy the scriptures which led to salvation. Again, the only scriptures available when Timothy was a child was the Old Testament. And Paul said that these scriptures led to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. We simply cannot separate the New Testament from the Old Testament any more than we can remove a building from its foundation. Many people point to the constant clashes between Jesus and the religious leaders of his day as evidence that the Old Testament, which they represented, was obsolete. They say that these conflicts were because Jesus was introducing a new and better way of salvation. However, let's look carefully at this passage to see what the conflict was actually about. He that is, Jesus replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have let go the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe 
your own traditions. In clash after clash, the conflict was because men had replaced the commandments of God with their own traditions. Is that important? Consider these words of Jesus. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It is good to listen to the wisdom of others. Sermons, Bible commentaries, and denominational creeds can be very helpful. However, we must test every idea, opinion, and doctrine against the full word of God. Anything that contradicts it, even partially, must be rejected. Therefore, in this study, we will take the position that nothing except the scriptures themselves carry any authority. So, am I saying that there is only one truth and that we can't be saved unless we understand and obey everything perfectly? Well, today people enjoy a foolish idea that we can all have our own personal truths. Even though my truth is the complete opposite of your truth, it is just fine because you have yours and I have mine. Common sense tells us that there can only be one truth. So yes, there is only one truth and one way. However, if our salvation is dependent on our ability to know the entire truth and follow it perfectly, I will be the first to hang my head in despair. Let me be very clear from the start. Salvation is, has always been, and always will be entirely by the grace of God. One of the greatest men of God that I've ever known was my grandfather. He wasn't great because he had tremendous wealth, biblical knowledge, or success in ministry. He was a poor man who only had a third grade education, and therefore he was denied even ordination as a deacon. His greatness was because he strove with all his heart to understand the scriptures, to apply them to his life, and to share the love of God with others. He was the personification of Jesus' answer to this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. As we examine the scriptures, I am certain that we will not all reach the same conclusions, and that is okay. There are many people that I deeply respect who do not understand scripture exactly as I do. Indeed, my own understanding of scripture continually matures as I study it. Paul said, Now we see but a poor reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. We must remember that some things simply cannot be proven conclusively from the Scriptures. We may have strong opinions about them, and they may be very important to us. However, such matters must not become points of division. There are also times that things become very clear to us from the Scripture, but we still struggle with or even resist them for one reason or another. Change is hard, and it can be very costly. Others may help and encourage us in these times, but it is ultimately a personal struggle between each of us and the Holy Spirit. I know, I have been in that position. Even though I wanted to please the Lord in every area of my life, I still struggled for over a year before I finally made a very necessary change. We will talk about that struggle later in this study. During that struggle, it was the kind and gentle encouragement of one person that the Holy Spirit used to help me surrender to where He was leading. And I am so glad that I did. 
Through this series, you'll begin to see an incredible new depth in the scriptures. You'll see that most of the so-called errors and contradictions in the Bible that skeptics love to point to are simply verses taken out of context. Likewise, many of the hard-to-understand verses in the New Testament will become clear when we examine their foundations in the Old Testament. The Bible may very well become an entirely new book to you as you begin to see it as a single continuous story of God's plan of redemption for mankind. You will also gain a clearer view of God, which will dispel misrepresentations such as the angry and condemning God of the Old Testament being so different than the loving and accepting God of the New Testament. Finally, you will gain an unshakable confidence in the Scriptures that will both strengthen your personal walk with God and help you to share the Gospel with others. So, any warnings? A few. During this study, you will hear many new terms. For example, I will sometimes use the Hebrew names Yeshua and Yahweh in place of their English counterparts, Jesus and the Lord. I will also use the term Torah to refer to the first five books of the Bible which were written by Moses. Torah is the Hebrew word for instructions, which is more expressive of God's heart than the word law, which has very different connotations in today's culture. We will also see that in the New Testament, the term law can mean either the commandments of God or it can refer to the Talmud, which are the traditions of the ancient Jewish teachers. Like any Bible commentary, some of what is in the Talmud is very good. However, as Jesus repeatedly pointed out, some of it is very bad. For some people, learning new terms is fun and exciting, but for others it can be frustrating. Since our goal is greater understanding and not confusion, if a term is unfamiliar, I will try to explain it as we go. However, if something is still unclear, please ask for an explanation by writing to me at rick underscore arndt at yahoo.com. You will also be exposed to many ideas that you may never have considered before. Again, depending on your background, you may find this to be exciting or very threatening. Our world is a chaotic collage of doctrines and philosophies. Sadly, it seems that people can prove absolutely anything, no matter how absurd, by picking a handful of verses from the Bible. This is a tragedy because it both dishonors God and drives people away from a saving knowledge of Him. Therefore, our standard in this series will be to test everything against the entirety of Scripture. When I am quoting long sections of the Scripture, it will sometimes be necessary to leave out sections to clarify the central meaning of the passage. I hate doing this because that is exactly how people who intentionally distort and twist scriptures clarify them for you. I pray that I never change the meaning of a passage that way. Nevertheless, I strongly encourage you to go back and review all such abbreviated texts because all those extra words that were omitted are also very important. True Bible study is hard work. But in a world of half-truths and deliberate deceptions, there is a lot at stake. Most of the people around us will never even read, let alone study, Scripture. The only Scripture they know comes from the twisted and perverted view they get from the media and from observing the lives of those who call themselves Christians. Therefore, we must all strive to truly understand the Scriptures and to live lives that honor God and draw people to a saving knowledge of Him. In this study, we will be examining many scriptures. Some will be very familiar. Others may be the first time you have heard them. I strongly encourage you to go back and look up all of these scriptures in your own Bible and review them in context, even the familiar ones. In fact, 
Let me suggest that we should especially review the most familiar ones in context. The sad reality is that many familiar verses are often quoted out of context, which totally changes their meanings. As we have mentioned previously, the true context of a verse is not merely the context of that paragraph, or even how it seems to fit into that book of the Bible. Since the Bible is a single, coherent story, the true context of a verse is how it fits into that story. And, just when you think you have it all figured out, the Holy Spirit reveals an entirely new level of understanding that leaves you in total awe. Yes, true Bible study is a never-ending adventure. So, with that introduction, let's dive in and start exploring the Scriptures. You've been listening to Understanding the Foundations. This 15-part Bible study series is a production of His Word in Wood. The entire series is available on Kindle, Audible, and YouTube. If you would like to discuss anything in this study, or if you just need someone to talk to, please don't hesitate to contact me at rick underscore aren't at yahoo.com. If you would like to share this series with a friend as an illustrated PDF book or an audio, simply request it and I will send you a link. Thanks for listening.